All right, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, yes, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> that's so good. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, as uh, they were going, they would praise God. And uh, that's where surrounding Jericho and praising God and uh, the walls collapsed in. Yeah, we're going to continue to praise God, lift Him up so that uh, people can see Him glorified and they can turn to Him. They can uh, turn to Him the truth. They shall know the truth and the truth shall set them free. Praise God. All right. Well, I'm here. It's... Uh, 7 a.m. Great morning. Uh, I love mornings and evenings. And uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel on this side. Uh, so we got so much good stuff. And uh, reading the Bible, and I hope you're reading the Word every day, praying every day, and continuing to stir yourself up in the Lord. And uh, yeah, we need the Lord. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we got the water there. You can get baptized. Uh, and yeah, just hearing the word, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and then get baptized if you have to. I mean, now I got baptized out in a river and it was a year later that I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I didn't really um, know about the Holy Spirit, but uh, I had this craving to want to have more something whatever it was and I had no idea but uh, I was at uh, this lady's house and it was on healing teaching on healing and I really wasn't in interested in teaching on healing but I was interested in Jesus Christ uh, but they had a little thing and uh, it was Rhonda Rhonda Stone that's a great name too. think about stone I love Jesus Christ the stone the rock of our salvation but uh, anyway, she asked me, well, have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? I said, no. She said, would you like to be? I said, yeah. Uh, and so she set me down in the chair, and there was others there, and they were praying, laying hands on me, and I began to speak in tongues. Uh, and actually, from that point, well, from that point, yeah, it really got me uh, more of that spiritual life of the reality of the spiritual life and uh, what else oh getting attacked by the enemy <laughs> getting attacked by the enemy that's a great one that happens but look David when he was a shepherd boy got attacked by a bear he got attacked by lion but he took his sling boom and knocked that bear and the lion destroying them when they were trying to destroy the flock and uh, of course he was raised as a king and uh, before that well after the lion and the bear he ended up the ones that were speaking against God um, boy they're very bold to speak against God too aren't they but he slew Goliath and he had other stones uh, because he had other brothers the, that they would be slayed too so anyway yeah we've got things that we got to stand up for and against wrestling not against flesh and blood you know people of the earth they are shaken and they don't know where to rest in fact rest that is one of the big things because I was praying today Lord uh, the deception that is here in the world and the deception that is in the church well there's no deception in God and his church God Jesus Christ is the head and his church are those who are following him but actually well we are warned about deception that comes into the flock and we're supposed to test the spirits and we're supposed to stand up and guard these things that we've been given in Christ and know about the deceptions of the devil we're not ignorant of them but there are deceptions that come into the body and I was wondering I was praying, God, how do we uh, deal this with this? What do we say? Uh, so anyway, anyway, what came up to me was rest, and that's good. And um, yesterday, kind of interesting, uh, I was out with family, and I got my nephew there, and I noticed he had something on his 
arm. There was three marks on his arm. And I asked him, what's that? He says, well, that's my life. Uh, life something, I forget what they call it. But you know how they do games where you have your life force on you? Uh, you'll have it down here or maybe they have it on their helmet. And I was thinking, well, I told him, well, that's a pretend thing, but our life is in Jesus Christ. That is our life. Um, and, you know, when you're thinking about it, your kids are being trained up to take on some other thing. And I, I noticed this with the mark that they want to put on people's hands or their heads. And so people are very vocal uh, and it's becoming a normal thing to want that. And they, they have trained our kids up to accept it. But really the mark, if you look in the Bible, uh, people have been persecuted and stopped from doing business and buy-in since the time of Jesus. If you're following Christ, uh, they would outright put you in prison. I mean, James was killed pretty quickly. The Jews were real pleased with it. And the Roman leaders were like, hey, this is great. Let's get Peter. So they got Peter, threw him in there. They would have killed him too. But uh, God slapped him, say, get up. The angel knocked those chains off, and uh, he continued to preach the gospel. And uh, so, anyway, but there's a lot of things uh, we need to be aware of, uh, and we'll get into that. But let's just jump right into the Word. Uh, where are we going to read today? Let's see. I wrote down. Now, let's start with. Matthew chapter 3, and then uh, maybe what I was talking about, we can come to some understanding in the Word of God. All right, I like this with John the Baptist. Chapter 3 of Matthew. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, they used the word heaven they didn't use the word God you'll see in the other Gospels you'll see the kingdom of God but with the Jews uh, they didn't want to really say the name of God so they see say the kingdom of heaven but remember Jesus said go share the good news of the kingdom of heaven uh, see there's a, a kingdom that can't be shaken not like the world all right so repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand for this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, and that's Isaiah 40 is where you can find that. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord for his paths, make his paths straight. All right. So they would make a way for a king, you know. It's just like we make roads. You know, the low places they fill them up, the high places they take down, but they make a path for the king. All right. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and leather belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the regions about the Jordan were going to him and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees and remember Paul was a Pharisee that uh, was actually there like a beast destroying the ones who were following Christ but then God used him and turned him so I don't care if you are a murderer you can turn to Jesus Christ and be set free and be doing the work of God Almighty, reaping um, reward in heaven and have an inheritance and eternal life. All right. Uh, so they were coming, the Pharisees and Sadducees, to his baptism. He said to them, you brood of vipers. And you see Jesus saying the same thing too. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? So John the Baptist is talking about there is a wrath to come. Bear fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Yeah, remember, Adam was made from the dust of the ground, and God breathed life into him. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And you, you know, as you look at the prophets, you see this thing where there is one side where it's desolate, darkness, destruction by fire, and no fruit. The other side is fruitful, where they're coming together in peace. They're no longer fighting one another. And uh, you got the rivers of living waters, the Holy Spirit, and uh, a city and a bride, a temple, and that's people. And it's a heavenly one, not the earthly one. The earthly one 
is in captivity with their children. The one above is spiritual and set free. All right, that's the one that Christ established. All right, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His So look at that, Holy Spirit and fire. Now what is this? We, we know the Holy Spirit. That's where you're going to have fruitfulness. What is the fire? His winnowing fork is in his hand. Now, you think of a devil with a pitchfork. Well, the devil ain't going to have nothing. The devil is thrown into the lake of fire, and uh, there is destruction for him and those who want to follow him. That's a uh, fire that will not be quenched. Look at this. Uh, so Jesus, this is Jesus he's talking about. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gather his wheat into his barn, but the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. All right, well, think about this. You know, when you go to the field, take some grain, rub it in your hand. I remember we used to work the grain fields, and uh, you could do that and then blow the shaft off. The winnowing fork, you can do it in a bigger way, but we do it with our hand blow the shaft off we have the wheat and we can actually chew the wheat and then it turns into uh, like gum when you're chewing it but we would do that in the fields all right now let's jump over to John 8 righty John 8 uh, we'll go ahead and read this whole chapter because it is good They went each to his own house, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives early in the morning. He came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. And placing her in the midst, they said to him, Okay, they're trying to fool Jesus. They're trying to get Jesus to, Look, you're either with Moses, and if you're with Moses, and you agree with him, then we can have the Roman authorities come against you. And if you're not with Moses, but you were, you're, you're with the Roman authorities, then we can have the people come against you because you're not really with Moses. They tried to trap Jesus, uh, but they're the ones that fall into their own trap. Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such woman, women. So what do you say? This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away by one, one by one, beginning with the older ones and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him Jesus stood up and said to her woman where are they has no one condemned you she said no one Lord and Jesus said neither do I condemn you go and sin no more so look at this woman calls him Lord the others I don't know what Jesus wrote on the ground it says um, those who have forsaken God will be written on the ground in the dust. So who knows what he was right? Could be could have been their names, the could have been the commandments that God said and their names by him. I don't know. But anyway, we know that they forsook God and they tried to well they did devise a way to have him killed, where the woman turned to him as Lord. Alright. Now this is great after that too. Verse 12, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Well, praise God, follow Jesus. That's how we're going to have this light. So the Pharisees said to him, you're bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I came from and where I'm going, but you do not know where I came from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh, I judge no one. Now this is interesting where he says he judges no one, because you're going to see farther up here 
uh, that he is the judge. Uh, but at this time, see, at this very time, he's coming for something else. He's coming to deliver the captives, but then he's going to judge also. Yet, even if I do judge, my judgment is true, for it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law, so yeah, I and the Father who judge. In your law, it is written that the testimony of two people is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. They said to him, Therefore, where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. See, these, these are Jewish people. Jesus is Jewish. The apostles are Jewish. Now, is, in, uh, is Jesus talking to them? his own Jewish brethren, is he uh, anti-Semitic? No, uh, but these people are following the devil and he uh, really calls them out. So did John the Baptist. These words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. So he said to them again, I'm going away and you will seek me and you will die in your sin. Where am I going? Where I'm going, you can't come. So the Jews said, Will he kill himself since he says, Where I'm going, you can't come? He said to them, You are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I'm not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, Just what I've been telling you from the beginning. I have much to say about you and much to judge. See, he's saying he does have much to judge. But he who sent me is true, and I declare to the world that I have heard from him. They did not understand that he had been speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing um, on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to Him. See, Jesus does the things that are pleasing to God. And God gave us roles, uh, even in a family. And uh, you know what? We better get off our high horse. We better uh, not be proud. And um, we better really be humble. Uh, you know, we're concerned about this life. Uh, we want to grab onto this life. Well, we're going to lose it all. Um, yeah, we have to lose everything, forsake everything to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And uh, that's how we're going to have unity and love with one another. But we speak truth, right? We can speak the truth and we can have differences, but we are one family in unity. Uh, and as he was saying these things, many believed. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, okay, these are the ones who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are seed of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Well, remember, they were slaves of Egypt, actually. Um, anyway, Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. Yeah practicing sin now those in christ well you shouldn't be practicing sin and if your heart uh tells you look this is wrong well that's when you repent um yeah so anyway let's let's go on the slave does not remain in the house forever the son remains forever so if the son sets you free you will be free indeed I know that you are offspring or the seed of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I have seen in my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. Wow, boy, God, Jesus really lays it on him, doesn't he? He doesn't hold back. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. So see, this is not just by their genealogy. No. Boy, isn't it something how people try to bring something in genealogy and they go back to this and they try to bring you back to uh, 
these in Israel even. I mean, I mean, I even notice this in churches, in non-denominational Christian churches. I see them even bring them back Jewish teachers. Well, the Jewish teachers are blind. They do not look through Christ. They don't believe Jesus is the Christ. Uh, they're still in their sins and have no way out of it. Uh, they're the ones who need to know the truth, and yet the churches are bringing this stuff and trying to tie people back to people of genealogy instead of tied back to Jesus Christ. All right, so where are we at? But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works of your, that your father did. They said to him, We are not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. Jesus said to them, If God were your Father, you would love me. For I came from God, and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but He sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It's because you can't bear to hear my word. Wow, they couldn't even bear to hear His word. Um, <laughs> well, I have seen this. Uh, look, I've seen even, if you speak according to Jesus and the apostles, what they're saying, sometimes they will be in an, just a regular non-denominational church, or you could be in a Catholic or other places, and they're not going to let you speak, are they? They're going to take your free speech away right there. You are of your father, the devil, and you will... Your will is to do your father's desires. Isn't that something? Right there, this they should have been uplifting God. And they were following the devil, Jesus is saying to them. Wow. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell you the truth and you do not believe me, which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. Wow. Well, remember Peter said you were once not a people, but now a people. Once you had no mercy, but now have mercy. That's what he said to those, uh, see those that, had uh, no mercy before the Gentiles. They didn't have mercy before. They didn't have a God before. But this is how great God is. He went first to the Jews and to bring those believing ones who really believed Him, who weren't following the devil, but wanted to truly follow God, that were seeking that kingdom of God. Even John the Baptist was seeking uh, and showing that kingdom of God and that He was coming with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Well, the Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan, you have a demon? Jesus answered, I don't have a demon, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is a judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Wow, is that now that's powerful, isn't it? we got to read that one again. If anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Well, praise God. Jesus is the only one who can bring us. He was the one who brought the new covenant that the prophets were speaking of. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died as did the prophets. Yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died and the prophets died? Who, who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. See, he's calling these people outright a liar. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Amen. Praise God. That word that was sent before by the prophets, they witnessed of Jesus Christ. And the apostles go forward as a witness too. See, we've had two witnesses and they testify. They gave their lives to testify of Jesus Christ. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. 
Praise God, Abraham saw it. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Wow, praise God. That's something, isn't it? Now let's see where do I want to go to. Acts 10.30. All right, Acts 10, verse 30. Now, this is when Peter, remember Peter got revelation. He saw that sheet coming down with all the, the animals that were unclean in it. Eat, Peter, eat. No, not so, Lord. I've never eaten this. Uh, the Jews were not used to eating unclean things. And so, no, what I have made clean is clean. So he was to go to the house of Cornelius, a um, Roman centurion, this was a soldier because this soldier had been praying to God. Oh, praise God. A soldier, a Roman soldier who had actually been praying and wanting to know the truth. Well, praise God. This gospel is going out to the rest of the world. Let's see what it says. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. So here he is at the house of Cornelius with Cornelius and all of his household. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news and peace through Jesus Christ. See, where are you going to have peace? It's through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Lord of all. Remember, uh, Paul said all of Israel would be saved. The believing Jews and the believing rest of the world together as one new man. There's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. Um, look, we're all one in Christ and Jesus is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee about the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah, remember, there was even soldiers going to John the Baptist with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we, yeah, look at that. Who's, who's oppressing? It's the devil. And there are people who want to willingly follow the devil uh, when we have life and life more abundantly through Jesus Christ. And we are witness. What's he say? We are witness of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses. Chosen by God as witnesses. The prophets and the apostles, the two witnesses. But uh, the witnesses who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach, that's to proclaim to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. See, Jesus Christ is the judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness. Are you seeing what that says? The prophets bear witness. The apostles bear witness. They were with him. They touched him. They ate with him after he was risen from the dead. That everyone who believes in him receive forgiveness of sins through his name. Wow, praise God. Isn't that powerful? The power of God Almighty. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. Praise God. I hope... And pray the Holy Spirit falls on you right there and you can go get baptized. All right. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speak in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, for they asked him to remain for some days. Well, praise God. Just like the woman at the well, praise God. Uh, 
yeah, I've got water that you will not thirst again. Well, she saw that this is the Christ. She went out to the rest of the town and brought them to Jesus. And Jesus stayed with them and uh, shared the truth with them, even though the Jews didn't like going to them because they were half Jews, right? Unclean. But know what I have made clean is clean. God has put everyone the same. No one has partiality with God. God made all man. You are made in the image of God to turn to Him and be saved. All right, where are we at? I want to get to, um, let's go to Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. All right, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Well, maybe we'll just start at Matthew 25. Come to me, I will give you rest. At that time, Jesus declared, this is Jesus speaking, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. See, you don't have to be a Greek philosopher. Um, now, you're going to go to a road that leads you to death. You cannot have life through philosophy. That's all emptiness. Um, what other road do you want? You want the road of the law? The law did not bring you life. Um, you want mysticism? Knowledge? You want to go on those roads? You want to go on the ancient mysticisms that people were writing about? Look, we heard the truth from the beginning and people took that truth and they began to, to go out and make up their own way. I was making up my own way before I turned to Jesus. Jesus is the one who helped me. Jesus is the one who saved me. All that other stuff, I was actually reading the Egyptian Book of the Dead and uh, other mysticisms. I was seeking something, truth, going until I ended up above the highest city in the world, Potosi, Bolivia, in front of devil altars. Look, and I didn't even believe in the devil at that point. Uh, but look, I learned the truth. The truth set me free. Jesus Christ. All right. Um, you've hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Well, praise God that, uh, you know, that's what came to me, this deception that's come into the church. We need to turn back to Jesus Christ. Revelation says uh, you need to return to your first love. Yeah, praise God. Repent. Turn to your first love. Turn to Jesus. Stop following men. Stop attaching yourself to, to men. Look, uh, Catholics, what are you going to do? Find another pope? No, we go to Jesus Christ. All of us, it doesn't matter where we're at. Uh, we can have differences, but Jesus Christ is the head of the church. And Protestants, what do you want to do? Come up with um, another new revelation where you can lead people? You can build up your own church. No, there is one church. Jesus Christ is the head, and uh, His people follow Him, just like that harlot, just like uh, uh, Cornelius and his whole family that were Roman soldiers. Praise God. Uh, you know, the, who's not going to have any rest? Those who worship the beast have no rest. Praise God. We have rest in Jesus Christ. Well, uh, praise God. I uh, hope that is a help. We need to uh, get settled on the foundation of Jesus Christ, that stone that the builders rejected. No, they're trying to build their own way. Uh, what? Follow us in our way up to get up high. No, you are low and captives and enslaved. Jesus Christ established the way. He is the way. He established that heavenly Jerusalem, a city. He said, you are a city set on a hill. Not to be like a light under a basket. No, you are on a hill. What he has said to you in the dark, well, yeah, you are praying and going to him. Then you proclaim it out there. Praise God. And uh, be about the, the work of Jesus Christ 
and uh, we'll just continue to follow him. He is the judge of the living and the dead. And uh, yeah, we can have confidence when he judges and uh, begin to teach your children the truth. Teach them this because uh, other people are teaching them. And uh, men of God and women of God continue in the Lord uh, because you'll be confident in that judgment. And uh, he will say, well done, good and faithful servant.